this time on Graveyard Cars. After years of lockdown, the ghouls are returning to SEMA. That means a backburnered build is now on high priority. It's weekends, it's night, it's all hands on deck. It's time to knuckle down to complete their tribute 1970 TA Challenger in K2 Go Mango. And I have not done Go Mango. This Chally may appear OE on the surface, but under the hood, it's packing a supercharged Mopar Hellcat Red Eye Crate Hemi, Magnum Force suspension, a five speed manual transmission, and custom callouts that reveal the beast to the attentive onlooker. But high pressure breeds big problems. Every year, no matter how much we plan, we're always behind. Will they have what it takes? to get this chally to Vegas on time. So I'm gonna let the president of SEMA know we may be a couple of days late so you can get home. Find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. Currently, we are working on our next big project for the SEMA show. This is our Mopar display car that we work in conjunction with Mopar and build every year, nearly every year. The first time we had any exposure at all to the SEMA show was 2016. Mopar reached out to us, and I don't remember how they got hold of us, but they were introducing their new controller unit, which allowed you to take their 392 crate engine and literally put it in anything you want. You wouldn't have to put it in a Mopar. You could put it in a bathtub, and it would run with this thing. It was literally designed to be plug and play, easy use. They want to know if they were to send us one of those, if we would be willing to put it in a car and display it at the show. So I thought it was a great opportunity. I mean, a great opportunity from the standpoint of graveyard cars getting exposed to the world. However, it's not as exciting for me from a standpoint of traveling, because I'm not a travel bee, okay? I've really never left my town. That was the first time I think other than when I was a kid that I'd even been outside the state of Oregon. So to travel to Las Vegas, of course, is a bit unnerving to me. I knew I wasn't gonna fly and I was gonna have to drive, but nonetheless, it was something that needed to be done. You know, I'm often asked why it is I didn't get out and travel and do more things. And I think a lot of it just has to do with, I was kind of pigeonholed into a situation where we were poor, I didn't have anything, I had a tumor in my foot. I was colorblind at Oshkod Slaughter, my left knee, I think I've mentioned that to everybody before. A uh, very small bedroom, 10 by 10, just a little bitty thing. If you want to change your mind, you had to go outside the room. <laughs> That's how small it was. I mean, it just, I, I had a rough time. The car that we ended up deciding we would use for this was a 1971 Plymouth Barracuda that I had been dragging around with me for many, many years, waiting for an opportunity. And this was the opportunity. We decided that we would make that car FJ6 sassy grass green. We went with the 392. They supplied us with 392 in the controller. We put a six-speed Tremec TTI exhaust on it. Ron from Magnum Force, first time I ever met him, came up and helped us put in his Magnum Force coilover transformer suspension. We put a Mosier Dana rear end underneath it. It was just a really, really great looking car. And we, we since then, of course, we've evolved a lot about the kind of provisions that we put into a car when it's getting that kind of stuff. But back then it was kind of trial and error. But in the end, that car came out just absolutely beautiful. Now in 2017, Mopar wanted to introduce their Hellcrate, the Hellcat 707 horsepower engine with their new controller. What we did have was a Superbird tribute car that we were building for a gentleman on the East Coast that commissioned us to do it. It was gonna be a 446 barrel. In fact, at the time that we made this decision to put the Hellcrate engine in it, it already had a 446 barrel in it. We were down, we were past the drivetrain we were ready to put the rest of the car together. I called the guy, he says, yeah, why not, let's do it. So that's why that car got elected. It was two thirds done. Since we only had three months to finish it, that was perfect timing. And Ryan, at the time, my body man, did a phenomenal job on the car. It came out just beautifully, took his time, did an excellent job, painted it limelight green. That was the color of that car. For the Roadrunner body, we converted it using a Ted Janik Superbird conversion kit, so the nose, the wing, all the pieces that go with it. We put the Hellcat with the controller in it with a six-speed Silver Sport. Again, the TTI headers and the motion, all that stuff in it. It came out absolutely beautiful. It was a hit at the show, a huge hit at the show. We were actually featured on the red carpet, which is a invite only. So for me, all of the SEMA shows, that was probably my favorite. 
I was named the brand ambassador by Mopar for Mopar. And, and while that's not the biggest deal in the world, I try to play it down. A lot of people are talking about it out there. So picture this, it's 2017. We just come back from SEMA and we're kind of brainstorming, what do we want to do? You're kind of thinking like iconic Mopars, you know, what, what could that be? So I tell Mark, let's do a little red wagon. I think I worked 90 days straight trying to get my part done. And then once my part was done, I took it over to assembly and then went over there and helped. And at that point, because it's a one-off build, putting it together went, I think fairly quickly, we had some setbacks. Mark's mock-up wasn't really a mock-up, but it went together, record time, got it to SEMA. So the A100 looks so awesome. We had a custom stand made that held it like it was doing a wheel stand the whole time. So overall, 2018 SEMA show was a big success. Now, while it's always hard for me to choose a, a particular favorite when it comes to the SEMA cars, because I, I really did love them all. They were all great experiences. Christine, you know, what can you say? I had had that epiphany, you know, on the way back from the SEMA show, when they presented me with the engine and said, we're gonna give you this engine, but you gotta put it in a car. I had the idea, how about putting a Elephant, the world's most evil high horsepower factory engine ever built, in the most evil car in the world, which is Christine, the 1958 Plymouth Fury. There were a lot of challenges because the Elephant was a much different setup than the even the Hellcat was when we put them together. A different special controller that went with it, different inner structure pieces that had to be done, and the fact that we had never done a 58 Fury before. So that car was rotten on the bottom half. We had to put a whole floor in it, meaning that we cut the bottom off of another complete car and welded it to the bottom of this car. It wasn't just the bo bottom of the rockers or the bottom of the quarters. It was everything had to be replaced on it. So we spent so much time getting the body work done and the metal and the paint and the interior that we were literally working around the clock until midnight. Me and Doug and his son Eli, we were here till midnight the night before it left. And we finally gave up putting the windows in it because we got down to putting the vent glass, the, the vent windows in and we just ran out of steam. So that's why when you see that car down at the SEMA show, it didn't have glass in the front. That's exactly why. So at the end, I would say that probably was my favorite car. Although I still love the little dead wagon, Christine was just a one-off classic and there's nothing like it in the world. Now we did end up having a car at the 2021 show. However, I wasn't able to be there in person, but it, we had the commitment to Mopar, so we had to have something there. We ended up deciding to send Mr. Martinez, beautiful little 1970 Roadrunner, 392 Hemi crate engine that we did a couple years ago with a six-speed Tremec transmission, Dana 60 rear. That car was a really big hit, even though it was a bit of a scaled down show because of the post-COVID fallout, the car did really well, and Mr. Martinez had a ball showing off his pride and joy. But all of that brings us up to where we are now, which is the 2022 SEMA show. And we have an awesome car that we're preparing for this. I'm excited to get down to the show and see my friends that I haven't seen in almost three years. And you know, Mopar ended up kind of adopting me, and I adopted them. And so we have some really good friends that it's going to be nice to circle back around with. I can tell you why my dad likes SEMA and it's not for any of the reasons he mentioned. It's because for one, everybody's telling him how great he is. It's like he's a celebrity. Everywhere he goes, people know who he is, people know his name. So he can't get enough of that. I mean, it just winds him up even more. And the second reason why my dad likes SEMA is all the girls. Okay, all the paid models that are standing at the booth to take pictures with people, he thinks that they like him. I wanna be clear here. The girls that are in the pictures with my dad get paid to be there. They're professional models. I think it goes without saying that they don't, they're not crazy about him. They don't think he's handsome or that he's super funny. They're there to get paid. So my dad goes home with a camera roll full of pictures of him and these models. And he likes to go around and show people all the girls that want to take pictures with him. Like they were there to see him, like they're his fans. No, 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 no. My dad made us stand in line like it was Disneyland for a half hour each time before I had to drag him away, so. It's ridiculous. So the car that we have chose to do is a tribute to the $1970 Challenger Trans Am edition. Started life, the one we're doing is a 446 pack four speed. You go, why would you butcher that with all these pieces? And that's not fair because that car was missing all of the original drivetrain to it. The original fender tag was gone, door vents gone, no title of the car. It had all kinds of problems that made us choose that one. And it was a really good body and it already had the metal work done. So that's why we opted to go with that car. Now, what I did was I put Will in charge of making sure that car got 
done on time because I'm just too busy with everything. And I know that he's very passionate about the SEMA show and he takes it seriously. And I have full confidence in his abilities to make sure that that car looks like a million bucks. So classic graveyard cars fashion when it comes to building a SEMA car. I think a lot of companies do like a year advance, like planning. We don't. So we have a bunch of customer cars where Mark's very strict about can't miss a beat on their stuff and then build a whole nether car at the same time, which wouldn't be so bad if he gave us the proper amount of time to do it, but he doesn't. He gives us two days from start to finish, it feels like. So it's weekends, it's night, it's all hands on deck type mentality, like it is every year. We're building this car the way we want to do it. So it's a lot of, should we add this option? Should we add that? And it's a lot of thinking that goes into that which in turn, Mark's got to go up there and he's got to start placing orders. I got Justin getting the body prep for all of this to come together at once. Now again, this is a tribute to a 1970 TA Challenger, gonna be vitamin C orange with black interior. We're putting a five-speed manual transmission in it, which would be the first time we've ever done one of those. So right now, this is our third supercharged version of a crate engine. We had our Hell Bird, which was a Hellcat engine, 707 horsepower. We had the Hellephant, 1,000 horsepower. It was also supercharged. And now this one, which is a Hellcat Red Eye that we're putting in there. So we know that there are provisions under the hood that have to be put in if you want it to look like it started life in there. Bracketry that would hold the transmission cooler if it was an automatic. Bracketry that would hold the reservoir for the inner cooler. Brackets that would hold the inner cooler. All of the plumbing for those. Knowing all those have to be in, we can do it now while the car is raw. So when we put it together, it will look like it started life that way. And it'll help anybody at home that's building one of these. If you want to do a sanitary job like this, one what you have to do ahead of time. There are some changes that had to be done over like even when we did the Hellcat engine and the Superbird, if you remember that. Ron was here from Magnum Force. He supplies the front suspension. One of the problems we ran into was that the K-member placement with the engine and the supercharger all in place was too high, too high in the saddle. And so what was happening, we'd close the Superbird hood and it would hit the top of the supercharger. So he made a mental note at the time that he needed to drop that down a little bit, recess it in the cradle. So we had to make a three quarter inch shim basically that would go between his K-member and the original frame rails. Well, now he knows all about that. So he's made adjustable motor mounts that set it down and forward. My stepdad is uh, having his 70, 80, fourth birthday tomorrow. I think I might just take the day off tomorrow and piss the boss off. So one of the things I always try to do is make sure we have a little fun. These cars are stressful. We're around million dollar hardware. Deadlines are everywhere. There's hail coming down. I got an audio gal screaming at me like I can't hear the hail, right? I know there's hail. Okay, do you hear the hail? You hear that? Yeah, what about that question? All I'm trying to say is I like to have a little fun. Keep them smiling, right? Hell, even Ted Bundy had a sense of humor for God's sake. I had a time. I had the time of my life, and I owe it all to Kentucky. That's good. We had a little harmony going there for a minute. We had a heck of a time with the Superbird with this temperature sensor that goes in the back of the supercharger. So it was hitting the firewall on the Superbird. We actually had to French that in right there. We had to cut the metal, drop that down inside there so that we could put a pigtail on it. In this case, because he's taken the K-member and the engine mounts and relocated everything forward and down, we now have the clearance that we need. If you take a look at the motor mounts themselves, they actually now have two sets of holes in them. One if you're running one that doesn't have the supercharger and one if you uh, are running it. So in this case, the frontmost holes allowed us to be able to move the engine forward. A very nice design on Ron's part. So we know what modifications had to be done to the K-member and to the mounts. Ron did those. So that means so far we haven't had to do anything inside the engine compartment to make the provision to be able to put this in. But there are some changes that have to be made on the outside. If you go out and you look at any of the stock original e-body cars, right here you will find that they have a lower control arm bump stop something that takes that lower control arm and the wedge piece uh, rubber that goes on the control arm and it comes up and it keeps it from traveling too far hitting that bump stop we don't need that with his type of suspension because it's a lower a arm 
it's no longer that singular arm. It's a lower A arm. It's a tubular, fully adjustable upper control arm. So that isn't needed. So we had to remove that. The other change we had to make is the upper control arm bump stop. Originally, it mounts right here where you see these little holes all welded up. We had to move it forward the three or four inches and put it here so that the trajectory of the upper control arm, the ones that he makes, now will come in alignment with that. So now that little acorn bumper stop will hit perfectly in the middle of it. This is the frame rail right here. Now you see this shiny metal right here. The shiny metal represents where we've cut this in all the way over to here where it meets the shock tower. That just gave us the extra three quarters of an inch that we need because you can see clearly if we were to have that piece back in there, it would have hit the alternator. And we did take it back just a little bit further than what we felt it needed because engines do flex and we don't want the vibration of that alternator hitting the frame rail. But honestly, when it comes to sanitary installations, that is the most sanitary third generation Hemi crate engine with the Mopar controller that we have ever done at Graveyard Car. So this is gonna be really exciting to see this one done and to run it and drive it. Let's throw this on, see if we have good clearance. One of the cool things that we've learned over the years is these engines with the supercharger sit high. With this car, it's a TA, which has, means it's gonna get a black hood, which has a bubble that comes up and gives you a lot of clearance underneath. And that was kind of our, our like fallback. We knew we'd have the clearance, but we wanted to see what we had. So at that point, I can grab Josh, the engines in it, and see what we're actually looking at, which we had clearance already, but that just gave you like an extra security with that style of hood. Oh, oh man. look at that. That is looking perfect. The hood fit couldn't have went better. That's so you good. figure that hood's gonna sit like that. Wow. So I don't think we'll have to make any provisions. So at that point, we were able to just pull the hood off, get it out there to Michael, and let him continue doing his body work on it. So the Hellcat engines have a lot of plumbing to go to them. Mark asked me to make all the provisions before we did paint. We had to make a couple brackets for things that are unique to this Hellcat engine. I wanted to make everything as clean as possible and look as factory as possible, even though they're not. We had to build mounting brackets for the supercharger coolant reservoir and also had to drill a couple holes for all the lines that go to it. We also had to create some brackets for the supercharger coolant radiator and also some brackets for the water pump for that system as well. Cool things about this car is Mark told me I could paint whatever color I wanted. And that's what's shocking. So if everyone at home knows me, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go pink. But pink was the only color I couldn't do because it's too limited of a market to sell the car. So that sucked. So then I went, oh, red. Red makes sense. Everybody here loved the idea. Then I slept on it and realized our last two SEMA builds were red. So I don't wanna do a third red one. So then I started thinking, what color have I not painted yet on the outside of a car? and I have not done Go Mango. Sprayed it out, sprayed a few pieces, get a good look at it, and actually went around and showed the other guys here at the shop, see what they thought, and everybody just hands down, loved the color, so we went with it, and was 100% the right choice. With this car, it is a metallic, and the metallic's different than Hemi Orange, and these colors, while may seem similar, they're not at all, and the metallic is very prominent in the orange. You can just see it plain as day. I could have panel painted it, but we went ahead and went with base clear. Once I cleared this thing, it just, it popped, the metallic did. Because it is a fine metallic, I was still able to panel paint it. I didn't have to paint it together. So that was still nice. And the car is just absolutely amazing color. You know, you, I, got, I love PPGs. Their products were meant for these cars originally, and it still holds true now. And even spraying this car out in single stage, because some of it is single stage, you, can, you can't tell the difference. It looks just as good as the base coat, clear coat version. Still to come, with the pieces coming together like clockwork, this Tribute 70 Challenger with custom suspension, five-speed manual transmission, and the supercharged Hellcat Red Eye built out and pre-fit, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, then there's Anthony. Will the pressure on Mark's lead painter prove too much to meet the deadline? If this was our last SEMA build, I didn't want to hire him. Find out when Graveyard Cars returns.
So on the underside of this car, we, we treat it like the rest of them. We don't get underneath there and just load it with undercoating. We put a nice coat on there so you can actually visually see, you know, are there any dents you missed? Was stuff not welded in properly? We don't hide anything with our undercoating. So we're very proud to get underneath there and say, man, that's a nice thin coat and the car's very clean. I don't know how many years we're gonna go to SEMA and how many builds you got. This is the first one that Brody's been part of since he's been here. So it was super important to me that I could get him doing some sort of color, doing something. So he did a lot of the jam work on this car because you don't know if we're doing it next year. So at least if this was our last SEMA build, I can say, you know what? I did this car and Brody had a huge part in doing it also. Oh, then there's Anthony. Anthony's, Anthony's my new helper. Now, when it comes to the cut and buffing, we've had a few changes over the years. The guy that's doing it for us now does a phenomenal job. He's got a lot of experience at it. He loves doing it, which not a lot of guys love doing it. I didn't want to hire him. We did anyways. I've been here about six months and I've been doing all the cutting and buffing, but I've also been doing a lot of the prepping to getting cars ready for paint. On this car, I jumped a lot buffing the prepping to get this car done to meet the deadline. He's like 10 feet tall. He walks like Frankenstein. He has eyebrows like the Wolfman, but then puts lines in him like Vanilla Ice. A lot of different things you're throwing at me with this guy, but does a good job. So it, he's weird. I don't know what his name is. I call him Count Chocula, because to me, he just looks exactly like the character from the, the serial, which I happen to have loved as a kid. So I just call him Count or I call him Chalk or something like that when I'm walking through. I think he kind of likes it. I asked my mom if she thought I looked like Count Chocula, but she said no. Well, I'll tell you what, Mrs. Chocula, I will buy you a box of Count Chocula and you can just stare at it. You know how you did as a kid, you'd eat your cereal and you read the back of the box. You can do that and have us picture your kids sitting there right next to the box. Because I'll tell you this, you'll never see my Count Chocula and the real Count Chocula together at the same time. And there's a reason for that. And then he's going to San Francisco with my son. So I don't know what that's about. But yeah, he, uh, he had a huge part in this car. He did the cut and buff work on it. And honestly, the car came out amazing. He knew the level it had to look. He did it. And he's pretty well that way on every car, you know, but both my helpers really knocked it out the park on this car. Just like clockwork every year, no matter how much we plan, we're always behind. This is going to get painted today. I've done the parts and pieces, so as soon as it's painted, give it about three days, then I'm gonna give it to my other guy to do all the cut and buff, get it over to Justin, and then we should be good, and that'll give him a good 25 days to build a car from start to finish. First time I've ever sprayed vitamin C. Mark gave me almost free reign to paint it whatever color I wanted. So it's the first time spraying it, I'm super excited. I'm 100% the reason we have a vitamin C orange 1970 Challenger coming out. You know, I'm excited to get it done and get it over to Justin. And I like to go over and help Justin because these are big builds for us. They're part of our history. It's on TV for you guys at home. So I like to have you hands on with this car as much as possible and sprinkle in some customer cars at the same time. So one of the things that's changed here at Graveyard Cars is our main shop that we've been sharing some stuff with you that does our upholstery work. Stan's upholstery is finally shutting down. Of course, as soon as we get a good shop and we start using them, he wants to retire. So the owner retired, closed his shop down. The nice thing is I had a conversation with his 35 year long employee, Marty, who does all the work and we send it over there and offered him a job and he took that job. So we now have our own in-house upholstery guy to do our tops, headliners, all of our seats, trim panels if we need to. So, I mean, that was really a blessing. Let's do the do. I like Mountain Let's Dew. Let's lay this mother humper in. Nothing to do with Mountain Dew, old buddy. Well, I sure like Mountain Dew. For the SEMA Challenger, I built out a brand new Mosier E-Body Dana 60 with 354 gears and 11 inch rear drums. So if it was a real TA, it would have had 11 inch rear drums. The E bodies and the B bodies, basically we have the same standard operating procedure when it comes to installing the drivetrain. We put the rear axle assembly in the car. You now have about, I'm guessing, 
maybe 400 pounds or so, maybe a little bit more in the back end. This is a Dana, a Mosier Dana rear end. So it counterbalances the back of that car. So we can go up front now and put that six or 800 pound front half of the drivetrain in the car and not worry about it tipping forward. Straight cam, say cut. Cut. Since we pre-fit everything on the Hellcat Red Eye, it made assembly go really easy. This is the finest, cleanest, most sanitary crate engine installation that we've ever done here. Because guys like Josh, who took the time to make sure everything was in there. They had already pre-fit it twice before. So setting it up in there is like sliding your sock on. It goes right into place where it's supposed to and it's just a matter of bolting it down. And at the end, you have a super clean sanitary install. So even though I couldn't pitch in with this build because I was off having Tiny Tray, I'm still really proud of the team that my dad's put together here at Graveyard Cars. Back at the beginning, it was just Will and my dad, and they did everything. But now we have a team that pitches in wherever we need them, and even if it's not their specialty, they'll still jump in and help. So it's a good day to be at Graveyard Cars. We're ahead of schedule, which is nice. I think Justin and Josh did a very good job at planning and locking things up and falling together all nice. Man, Brody, this is looking really good. It's definitely nice to be able to work on them like I have been. You did really good prepping this thing. Thank you. All right, I have a different way of teaching. I'll, I'll admit that. I do very much believe beating somebody down to, to where they're just hopeless and have no reason to even come to work and then building them up from there. You can't have a rainbow if you're not willing to put up with a little bit of rain, right? You know who said that? Dolly Parton. All right, there we go. She turned out pretty smooth. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Another thing that makes a finished product stand tall and go together easily is the pre-fitment. So when it comes to the doors, fenders, the hood, the deck lid, the valances, they were all pre-fit on this car. The whole car was primed and blocked all together, then taken apart, then painted, then reassembled. And that's what makes every one of these parts line up perfectly the way they did during pre-fitment. Don't go crazy tight, just in case we have to adjust it a little bit more with the hood. All right, that's looking really nice. So because this is a TA Challenger and has a fiberglass hood, the hood springs have to be changed out to the lighter ones. Without the lighter springs, it'd end up folding the hood in half, possibly. And once I figured that out with Mark, I uh, changed them out and I just had to get Count Chocula to paint them. On our hood, you know, we want to keep it just like factory. The underside's unfinished. I used PPG, it's uh, flat black, sprayed that on the jams, flipped it over, and did the top of it, dried, looks amazing, then we put it on the car, and that was like the final piece that car really needed. So between the stripes and that hood, it looked amazing. It's hard because I don't like the way the hood looks underneath because it's, it's unfinished, but that's the way factory is, and we have done such a good job of knocking these lids out, it's a shame. So the stuff you see us putting in all the time on these cars, the second skin product, it's a sound deadener. It allows you to be able to drive a car, especially one that's putting out 807 horsepower with a, with a two inch primary tube TTI header and three inch exhaust. You're gonna want it and it's gonna work real well in this car. Over the years, we've trained a lot of people at Graveyard Cars on how to do assembly, and some have stayed with us, some haven't. Eventually, it seems like they all move on. But right now, I've got a pretty good team. And so they know exactly how a car has to go together, what my criteria and standard operating procedure is for putting these cars together. It's fun for me to sit back and watch a team of guys go an assembly that has to be done in a month or two months and know that they already 
know what the right hand's gonna do in the left hand and what they're gonna need. It just helps make it a very fine-tuned assembly line. So the TA Challenger has some of the coolest graphics in the world. I just absolutely love them. Now the trick with these graphics is it stops on the quarter panel, okay? So you have to put the door on first, get it exactly where you want in space, then you would put the quarter on, then you would put the fender on. That means you have to lay everything out ahead of time. We lay it out, we put a piece of tape at certain points and we put a mark on the outside lining of the decal to match up and correspond with the actual tape that we have on the car. So when we do have the solution on it and time is of the essence and we gotta move fast, we can just take that decal, wet it down, put it in place, move it side to side, up, down, line it up and nail it down. It's only one o'clock and he's leaving. Seven working days. And then what he's gonna do and be like, ah, oh, yeah, Justin and I, we built this car together. No, Josh and I. Once you have the center nailed down, which is your door, you can move on, you can go to the quarter panel, get that thing lined up, make sure the trajectory is the same as it was when you laid out your stripes earlier. And then from there, you can move to the fender. Then when you stand back and you look, you have a very even flat trajectory throughout the stripe and it looks the way the factory did. Probably more caution even than the factory had. We had these custom made by our friends down at Phoenix Graphics. We had the 340 and the six pack replaced with the 6.2 red eye, which is just a really cool touch to it. Keeps it all in the spirit of 70 TA Challenger. So when you add those to the TA, I think it speeds the car up. I think it gives it a forward rake look and I think it's just one of the best graphics in the world. Still to come, with pressure building. This guy's been working around the clock to get the car done in time for SEMA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark turns up the heat to keep the team on task. Smile, you little freak. This great Hemi Hellcat Red Eye needs some custom exhaust before they can fire it up. Can we start it after that at least? Yes, can we at we least can, do that? We definitely can. I want to hear the exhaust. We're going to tighten it down and then we can hear the exhaust. But will the team survive their own venting? What have you been doing? Oh, you you want to come adjust this piece again? Make it, it look out. like you were working on the car? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice try there, bud. Or will they turn over before this Hellcat does? You're, you're just living a fake life in, and makes people upset. Find out when Graveyard Cars returns. It's, it's so foolish, great. it's childish. Yeah, Will's not always right, is he? All right, first thing on this particular system that we're gonna have to put in is our megaphone exhaust. We're gonna start on the driver's side. Yep. That's super cool. Isn't I it? love it. Mopar it's came awesome. up with that. So the last thing we had to do before we could do an initial fire up of the car and just make sure that all systems are go, because keep in mind, we've never ran this engine before it's brand new. We have to install the exhaust system. So this will actually go into the mounting bracket, which is up here into the car. And I'll show you once we get it all put together, how that goes. But this slides into a piece of rubber that is encapsulated in steel so that when this goes into position, it comes out like that. All right, so this will go up in here and it goes from the back forward. Yep. Great. Okay, so you wanna put your side in over there? Yeah. Normally we start up the very front and we work our way to the back, but in this particular case, because of the way this exhaust is built and the trajectory of everything, we wanna get yeah. those hung into place. So with those two hanging in place, I think the next thing is gonna be the muffler, correct? Yep, yep. All right. Okay, so now it's time for the muffler. Now, this is cool. You'll see it's got this big band around the back of it here, and it's got the hanger. But you'll also notice that on the back of this muffler, there's no outlet. Like a normal muffler would come in through the front and go out through the back. This doesn't because it has to make a U-turn. So it's actually going to come in here and go out here into the exhaust tip itself. It's a very, very unique muffler. So here might be a two guy, two guy job to hold, I'll hold the front maybe while you set that. Yeah, guide the 
Got the tip in. Okay, we go. So should kind of hang on its own. That'll just hang there like yep. that. So let's do the other side. So now it's time for the head pipes. This is an original TH Allinger head pipe. But what we had to do is we had to modify it. If you look here, you'll see because we're running the TTI headers on it, we couldn't use the original system, which is this one, where it would have bolted to the HP exhaust manifold, had the flange on it, and it would have rolled back. We can't run that because we have this collector here. So to marry into the collector, you had Josh, I think, weld this up and take the TTI collector and marry it real nicely into an original TA Challenger exhaust so that we can put this together, bolt it down, and it appears factory other than its headers. So this has to go into here first, yep. is that right? Slide that in, it'll stop on its own. And then this goes up to there. Just, just rotate. It's rotated. Accordingly. And you put your bolts in. Okay, we do the passenger side. This one slides in first, like that, and then this gets rotated up like that. Right yeah, there. yeah. Okay. Uh, Mary, Yolanda, Lisa, Alice. Hey, um, Nadine. Hey, Will. Hey, buddy. I didn't know you. Must not have heard me. You, you got a second old tiger? You can come here. I, I need I need you down here. So you know, Mark and Justin are hanging hanging the exhaust on this thing, and I had made eye contact with Mark, and at that point he calls me over, which I mean he is my boss, so I should go over, but still I'm reluctant to go over. But then it goes back to where he is the boss, so I have to go over. Come on in here, don't be afraid. We're just putting an exhaust system on. I was wondering if you have any idea why this spoiler wouldn't be done for this car, because we were going to put it on in the stripes today. Mm -hmm. Because it came damaged, so we had to repair it and prime it. Three weeks ago, it came in damaged. My oh. friend Dante gave me a good deal. It came on in it. Friday. Today's Wednesday. Friday, three weeks ago. Huh. No, no, it really was. You're right. Yeah, no, I have a tracking. Yeah, well, you're you right. can go to that, you're right, and then give up things. That's, that's, that's funny, fun. isn't it? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Fun. <laughs> it works pretty good. It's, it's so foolish. great. It's childish. <laughs> no, I just, I'm agreeing. You're right. Okay, so I, I would like to address this you're right thing. It's one of my pet peeves is. These simpletons like Will and the rest of the team, they'll come up with something they think is so clever. If you remember back in the early days, Darren, my nemesis, uh, he didn't even come up with you are, I came up with it, but he loved it. So every time you insult him, he'd say, you are, and he got a whole following on Facebook. They all, they all just wake up in the morning, you are, no, no, you are. That is so sophomoric. It's mentally irregular to even to go down that road. Are you done? You are. <laughs> Say you are again and see what happens. You are. But <laughs> when I'm done with it, it's going to need a salvage title. <laughs> when I'm done with you, you'll need a salvage title. <laughs> you are. Did, did you recognize You are. <laughs> it's mentally irregular. It's not right. Like when Rocky said to Paul, hey, don't get mentally irregular. That's what he's talking about. That's a textbook example of mentally irregular. You are, you're right. It's simple little catchphrases that they think are so damn funny. They, the worst part, the most offensive part to the listener, you know they think they shut you down. <laughs> Do you know how annoying that is? That's sick. My humor has a lot more intellect behind it than you are and you're right. So you guys have come up with your right? Actually, hey, wait a minute. This... Actually, Heather started it because I'd argue something with her. And then she'd be like, fine, you're right. And then I used it on Justin. And then he hated it. And now he uses it. No, I just say it's you're right because it, it stops. No, it doesn't stop. It should stop the no, conversation. No, until you actually truthfully admit that I'm Mark, right. Mark, you're right. No, that's why. You <laughs> wouldn't have the polygraph right now. You're just playing like I'm right. But you know I'm right. I can show you the shipping and receiving. Yeah, I said you're right. Yeah. No, but you don't believe I'm right. And you still got away from the question by deflecting, why isn't it painted? Because I just got it Friday. Let's say it came in Friday. This guy's been working around the clock to get the car done in time for SEMA. Yeah. <laughs> what, what have you been doing? Allergies. You want to come adjust this piece again? Make it, it look out. like you were working on the car? And send me pictures while I'm gone? Yeah. 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 <laughs>
Well, nice no. try there, bud. I just wonder if I could get that sometime today, maybe by the end of the day. So no. Put it on. I just find All right. So I'm going to let the president of SEMA know we may be a couple of days late so you can get home and do some social media posts. You're right. Yep. Yep. Get home immediately. Hey, Layla, Layla. Yeah, yeah forget all that. I want to get a social media. Get up here. Get up here. And smile, you little freak. Why don't you take pictures of once you craft your pants and fill the diaper? This is real. You're, you're just living a fake life and, and makes people upset. My social media, I don't do anything negative. That's just not for me. I like to do happy posts and happy things and my daughter. And Mark says, so he wants me to post pictures of Layla covered in He told me next time Heather and I are fighting, I need to post that. I'm like, well, we don't fight. Well, he called me a liar. Show the downside. Don't always just show the upside. Okay. Show the downside. Just I'll get you the spoiler as soon as possible, buddy. Appreciate it. My problem with the Facebook stuff and the and and all these posts about how great life is, it's fake news and it's not healthy for somebody who's having difficulty in their relationship or difficulty in their life. Show the real world. Show the kids diaper full, the kids sick. He wrote red rum on the wall in the bathroom, right? Show the picture of your wife breaking your favorite dish or your favorite mug. That's America. That's the Norman Rockwell that we all grown to love and cherish and nurture and hold tight to ourselves. That's that's what I want to see on Facebook. Okay. I don't even know. Got the exhaust system setting in place. All we got to do now is tighten it down. Then can we start it after that at least? Yes, can we at we least can, do that? We definitely can. I want to hear the exhaust. We're going to tighten it down and then we can hear the exhaust. Oil is full. I checked it. Antifreeze is full. You bumped it to make sure it would fire earlier, yeah. but we haven't ran it with this exhaust. So to me, one of the most dramatic moments in a build is the fire up of the engine. Now, when it comes to our other engines, our, our standard replacement engine, 383, 340, 318, 440 Hemis, we've already ran the engine. Okay, we already know that it runs. It's just a matter of, is it getting fuel from the tank up to the front? Has it got spark? Has it got power to the coil? But when it comes to these, there's a lot more nail biting involved. If you look at the number of wires that had to be extended, because we wanted to put the computer, the CPU, everything inside the car, nice and sanitary. We built a place on the back of the glove box for it. We had to extend all the wires. So that's a lot of soldering. That's maybe 50 to 100 wires. Maybe one of them didn't get a good bite, a good connection. There are a lot of things. Maybe the fuel isn't delivering from the tank all the way to the front. This is all kind of brand new prototype stuff. So there is a lot of excitement and I guess attention to all the detail when it comes to firing one of these engines up because it needs to run. The car runs fantastic. We're out of the woods on that part now. It's just a matter of final assembly on it. It's another car down. We're on the we're on the road to the show. Next stop, Chi Town. Leo, put your money down. Let them roll. One more for the road. Oh, Candida. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's gonna be one wicked mamma jamma. That sounds good. Good job. Sweet.